I'm Paul Beckwith. In the last video, in the last few videos, I discussed the terrestrial biosphere sink and how it's actually in great danger of tipping over into a carbon source, no longer being a sink. Right now, about 30% of anthropogenic carbon emissions are absorbed within the terrestrial plants. With business as usual, in 20 years, so by 2040, less than 20 years, the percentage of anthropogenic carbon emissions expected to be absorbed by the terrestrial sink will roughly halve to 15% of the anthropogenic carbon emissions. So CO2 levels in the atmosphere will skyrocket. The reason this is expected to happen is because with continued temperature rise, the respiration curve of the plants increases. But the photosynthesis of the plants actually peaks and then decreases. We've likely passed the peak of the photosynthesis curve for the C3 plants, which is most plants and we'll, we'll soon reach the peak for the C4 plants, which are the things like the grasses and corn. Now of the terrestrial sink, the largest single component is of course the Amazon rainforest. It's the largest swath of tropical rainforest on the planet. It's a, the forest drives a partially self-sustaining regional climate and hydrological system. Because for example, rainfall in one part of the Amazon rainforest is then transpired up through the leaves of the plants, creating clouds, which then move across the rainforest, causing more rain. And in this fashion, the rain is recycled, you know, five, six, seven times as you go across the rainforest. So if this stops, then in one region, it stops throughout the rainforest. So the rainforest is at ever greater risk of sudden collapse. And then what would happen is the, it would be replaced by savanna um, grasslands with, with a uh, few trees. So the paper that I was discussing previously was Carbon and Beyond the Biochemistry of Climate in a Rapidly Changing um, Amazon. Okay, so that's the, the, uh, that's the paper actually specifically on the Amazon, which is just one component of the terrestrial biosphere. And there's rapid changes going on in the Amazon. You know, deforestation is accelerating, especially given the government of Brazil. The land use change is accelerating. Lots of forest is being burnt down um, and, and soy plantations and livestock farming are being done. There's other regions where there's mining and, and oil um, drilling. And of course, the global change in the climate is affecting the overall health of the Amazon. The, when we talk about the Amazon, it's mostly the carbon cycle. It's the cycling and the storage of carbon in these vast forests. But there's lots of other climate effects. There's lots of methane being absorbed and released. There's nitrous oxide, N2O. There's black carbon from the fires going into the air. Um, and that's creating also aerosols. There's biogenic VOCs or biogenic so uh, biology source sourced in the trees, the vol VOCs, volatile organic carbon. Um, there's, uh, you know, huge changes in evapotranspiration and there's huge changes in the albedo. You know, as we lose rainforest, which is fairly dark and replace it by grasslands for, for livestock grazing or soy farms, the, the uh, Amazon becomes lighter. It's not as dark um, a place. There's a lot of dynamic responses to uh, these um, changes. Some are localized, for example, local fires 
land use change, infrastructure, storms, plus there's the global effects, the general warming and drying, and then the effects of the ENSO, the El Nino Southern Oscillation um, cycles affecting the Amazon. So there's all these direct and indirect effects, uh, but it's mostly when you just account for the carbon cycling, we have lost the sink of the Amazon in the very, very dry years. In the very wet years, there's still lots of CO2 being absorbed. But when you look at the overall picture, the overall climate or warming that occurs from net warming from the Amazon, when you include the methane, the CH4 and the nitrous oxide, then those, uh, those effects, they offset and actually exceed the carbon sink of the Amazon rainforest. So I'm gonna talk about all of these details um, and the recent paper. So this is just to show you um, that these are tipping elements in the Earth's climate system. I've often talked about the Arctic sea ice loss being a major tipping point, uh, the increasing melt of the Greenland ice sheets. Um, we had a climate change induced ozone hole in the Arctic a number of years ago. Normally the ozone hole is just associated with Antarctica. Uh, the Atlantic deep water formation is being affected and this could uh, tip over the AMOC, the ocean current system, slow it down. We're getting boreal forest dieback, both in North America and in Asia. There's of course the permafrost and tundra loss and the resulting methane being outgassed. The Indian monsoon is undergoing instability. The changes in ENSO, the amplitude seems to be getting, we're getting stronger and stronger El Ninos and the frequency seems to actually be increasing. There's other things like shifts in the West African monsoon, um, Sahara greening, the dieback of the Amazon, Amazonas rainforest. So the Amazon rainforest dying back is a huge possible tipping point uh, that it looks like we are, are almost at. Um, the instability of the West Antarctic ice sheet and the changes in Antarctic bottom water formation. So these are all tipping elements of the climate system. Um, if you ask me which ones we're closest to, I would say the Arctic sea ice loss, definitely. Um, and this is in a race with the dieback of the Amazon rainforest. And I would have told you this uh, a decade ago, that these are the two most critical elements of, of the climate system. So just a reminder to go to paulbeckwith.net, my website. And the last um, post was talking about how we need a climate operation warp speed. We're close to a terrestrial biosphere tipping point. Please consider donating at my PayPal to support my, my efforts. And of course, my YouTube, if you just Google Paul Beck with YouTube or you know, from my website, you can link to the uh, videos um, that, that I've posted, or you can just follow me directly um, on my YouTube channel. I have to try to get the number of subscribers up to get more. I've, I've produced over a thousand videos and I need to, probably work. I need your help to increase uh, the number of people that subscribe and get this, uh, you know, very important information on our changing climate. And of course, my Facebook page, Paul Beckwith, um, you can follow. And also my Twitter feed, Paul Beckwith, um, my Twitter feed uh, at Paul H. Beckwith. Okay. And uh, so basically, this is a paper that I discussed in the last few videos about how, you know, under business as usual emissions, this divergence um, between photosynthesis curve and the respiration curve of plants um, will lead to a near halving of the land sink strength by as early as 2040. So it's currently 30% of anthropogenic carbon emissions, and that would reduce to about 15% by as early as 2040. Um, and that means the, the terrestrial biosphere becomes a net source of carbon as opposed to a sink. 
And the reason why that happens is you can look at the curves here. You know, if you plot temperature here and you plot the temperature response for C3 photosynthesis, that's the majority of plants, and for the grasses and corn, you get these two curves here, and then this is the respiration curve. Now, if you combine the photosynthesis of these of the C3 and C4 plants, depending on the ratio of the plants in the, around the planet, then you get this global photosynthesis curve here. And this is the land sink of carbon curve here. And uh, you know, here's where we are with the current climate up in this region. So it looks like we've passed the peak of global photosynthesis. And as we warm, the respiration still increases, the amount of photosynthesis decreases. Um, so the land becomes a producer of carbon and not a sink of carbon. Okay, and this is regions of the world. Um, this is where we are present day, the months above Tmax. Um, this, this is the months above the temperature where the sink switches over to a source. So if you look at the, with latitude, this is the current biosphere productivity, the blue line, very high productivity near the equator and it drops off at higher latitudes. There, this is a desert region here, and then we get a peak here. There's more rainfall in this region, so we get more biosphere productivity. And this is what we expect in the 2040 to 2060 range, these, the, the red curve, and then um, an orange curve, 2070 to 2090. And you'll see that the orange and red curves almost overlap. So the huge drop-off will occur uh, up front, in the next 20 years, with business as usual, the, the biosphere, the terrestrial biosphere productivity goes way, way down. Look at the drop at the equator. Huge drop here. The percentage drop is less in the other regions. Um, and here you can see the months above, you know, these are the months above Tmax where you start getting a big drop off of, of, uh, of, of uh, photosynthesis. And you can see uh, it's extending to a uh, large, uh, uh, this is zero to 12 months, okay, cumulative months above T max by 2040. And you can see a huge, what sticks out is the Amazon rainforest. The Amazon rainforest uh, photosynthesis, the productivity, the biomass stored will significantly decrease. So I'm going to focus on this region um, and look at the uh, latest paper, which looks at this region and basically shows that when you, when you look at all of the effects of methane, nitrous oxide, black carbon, aerosols, um, biogenic, volatile, organic compounds, and carbon, then to the climate, this is no longer a, a net sink. It becomes a source. Okay, so shocking findings. This is one of the articles. Um, on shocking findings show the Amazon may already be a greenhouse gas emitter. Okay, historically the Amazon rainforest has been one of the plant's most important sources of carbon sequestration. There's cliches like it's the lungs of the planet. It's stored billions of tons of carbon from the atmosphere every year. For decades, scientists have cautioned us not to take these this crucial service for granted, warning that in 15 years, the Amazon could meet the fate of other large forests and become a source of greenhouse gases, no longer a sink. So this re research paper that just came out shows that this bleak scenario has likely already begun. And I'll talk about this study in great detail. But up until now, the climate research in the Amazon basin is mostly focused on the carbon cycle how trees turn atmospheric carbon dioxide into oxygen while storing carbon and how they release carbon when they're set on fire. But it doesn't account, most of the studies don't account for these other biophysical climate feedback. Okay, but carbon is just one of the greenhouse gases that cycles through the, the 2 million square mile or 5.2 million square kilometer rainforest. So trees in tropical wetlands emit a surprising amount of methane. Okay, uh, so there, the soil sequesters nitri nitrous oxide, but when it's drier and gets degraded from logging and climate change, it releases more than it takes up. Okay, so, um, you know, most people just talk about the carbon cycle, but when you look at, when you consider the effects of all these other greenhouse gases, the Amazon 
uh, becomes uh, harmful for the climate. I'll continue. Thank you.